Hey guys, nscaler454 here and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to install a Tortoise slow motion switch machine because they are quite popular and relatively easy to install. Of course, we have the switch machine motor and I do recommend making sure this is centered for doing the installation. We have the little slider fulcrum, which does have a right way and wrong way to install this. You'll see the top has small little holes, whereas the bottom has larger holes because it's tapered. And this gets installed like this, and that becomes your fulcrum point for the wire when the motor is in its range of motion. Now speaking of wire, the kit comes with some 025 three and a half inch long wire, and I suppose it's sufficient because it does come with the kit and I've used it and so far it seems okay. But I have read that some people prefer to go with thicker wire. In this case, this is 039 and you can see the difference in the thickness. Is it really necessary? I'm not so sure. But from what I can tell is if, basically, the further the wire gets away from this fulcrum point, the thicker the wire you're going to need. So if you have a, you know, a base of foam that's really thick, maybe two or three inches, you're going to need to go with thicker wire. Just be aware that if you do go with the thicker wire, this little hole right here where the wire gets mounted into, you're going to need to drill that out because this does not fit in there. And then of course you have a little screw, which, goes into here and holds the wire in place and this thing is not that fun to deal with because it's quite difficult to screw in you'll see that as uh, this video progresses naturally the kit comes with instructions and they're very handy as it shows you the wiring diagram it also comes with this trick little template which you can photocopy cut out and glue onto a piece of cardboard or plastic or whatever and this is very useful when you are going to set up to mount the switch on the bottom of your layout. And one thing I recommend, get a ruler, draw a line across the entire card, like so. You have these lines like this. That's very handy, and I'll show you why later in this video. The instructions also include the template on how to bend the wire, and that's what we're going to do right now. What I like to do is just make a mark with a felt pen every pair of pliers see if you can see where I made it right there and then if you line it up you can actually see where you are roughly It looks pretty close, like that. Make your second point. Now when you're doing the second marking, you have to make sure that the wire is 90 degrees to your pliers, like so. And nice and straight, like that. And then you can Go ahead and make your bend. This one is not so pronounced. And let's see how that looks. Pretty good. Now I can install the wire. So we'll slide that up like there. Put the wire through that. Into this little hole like that. And then we can go about screwing this in and you'll see this is not the best screw in the world. Oh, this one might have gone in better than I've ever had this go. That's great. If you find that it's sticking on you, just use a pair of pliers and you can turn it like this and it won't put too much pressure on the motor itself. But that is ready to go. When you have the track in the exact position that you want, just take a felt pen and mark it. Then you can 
put it back in the exact same spot later on. Now for me, in this case, that also includes this piece of track right here. You need to make marks of where you're going to have your wire come through the bottom. Now ideally, you're going to want to do this with the spring removed on your uh, turnout, which I forgot to do, but I can make do just fine. But this has to be centered. So the rail has to be in its centered position. That's important. Like so. And so we have a hole here. And we have a hole here. That one, that one. Okay. Now take a small drill bit and we are going to drill down. Like so. Now is also a good time to have your markings for where you're going to have your feeder wires and whatnot to go through. So I forgot to do that, so I will take care of that right now. We're underneath the bench, and these are the little holes that we drilled from the top. And what we're going to do is take a ruler, and we're going to go from the center of each hole. Let's see if I can do this. And we're going to draw a line. Like that. Make it nice and long. Hopefully that worked. Good. Perfect. And you'll see. That's going to be our alignment line for our template. That's why this is handy. Now I can make the hole where the wire is going to go through bigger. I'm just going to drill it with a quarter inch drill bit. Now we can use the template to line up where it's going to be and yeah, put a little holes like this. Honestly, these are just reference holes. Now the kit didn't come with any screws to hold them up. So I just using some little six by half inch screws. They're actually a little too big, but they work. We can still use our alignment line to line up with this line of the holes. So we put that in, it's going to be a little tight. Right. I already made a video on how to wire the turnouts. If you'd like to watch that, I'll put a link in the description. All right, we got that in. Now, a lot of people choose to solder their wires directly to the tortoise machine, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It works good. It's the cheapest way to do it. But I selected to buy some of these tortoise wiring connectors, and I really like these. All you do is strip the wire, put it into the hole, screw it down, and that's it. Uh, there's, It's very clean. It's easy to do. If I mix, if I mess it up, I can pull a wire out and just redo it. Say a motor on the tortoise dies, I can pull the machine out and just swap this around. I don't have to re-solder anything, so that's easy. So there's a lot of advantages to this. It just it costs a little bit more money. As for the wiring of the uh, the tortoise itself, the outside wires, positive and negative, go to your DC power, which is what you'd use to the switch and actually activate the tortoise itself. The red and black wires are for your DCC or your AC power. And I do not wire these to the track. I wire them to the distribution block. This is my preference. The green wire goes to the frog on the turnout so you can switch the polarity. These three terminals, as far as I know, they can be wired to a light. So when your turnout is flipped one way, it goes red, flip it the other, it goes green or whatever. Um, I don't have any kind of the equipment or any experience with that, so I can't comment on that with any kind of certainty. But once you have all this wired in, all you do is plug it in, and you're good to go. 
Now I always recommend you test your track before gluing it down. So we'll use a multimeter set on AC with the track active. And my inner rail is red, which I'll call positive. The outer rail is black, which I'll call negative. And all I have to do is touch the track and we have positive voltage. You can do that at the various points. That's good. We'll even check this one here, like so. That's good. And now our frog, the way we have this set is the track is direction to go that way. So it means this frog should be positive or red. And there we go. And I, I do have it set up to a toggle switch. So that works. And now it should be the other way where the frog is negative or black and that is good and I don't know if you can see that from there but it is working and it's holding nice and tight technically I do have my switch backwards but that's not a big deal there we go so now this is complete it is ready to be glued down and uh ready to run some trains oh before i finish when you're all set and done and glued down you can go ahead and cut the small little wire that's um poking through from your uh from your tortoise do not use your track cutters that will completely damage your edge use some side cutters that are actually hardened steel uh, these things are great. Uh, just one thing to be aware of, you may want to wear some safety glasses and some gloves or something, because there is a lot of energy that is stored in there, so when you cut it, that is going to go flying. So <laughs> just be aware of that, because uh, you don't want to get injured. Now, if you guys like this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe for more videos, and thanks for watching.